One police officer is behind bars. This after responding to a life-threatening 911 call. Officer Ben Darby, a former Huntsville, Alabama officer, made a split-second decision, shooting and killing an armed suspect who allegedly posed a deadly threat to him and two other police officers. Darby has been sentenced to 25 years in prison. Joining us now to discuss is his wife, Keelan Darby. Uh, Keelan, welcome to National Report. Thank you so much for coming on. I, I, I can't really imagine what you're feeling right now, what you're going through. Of course, uh, you know, your husband and, and you are separated right now. Tell me the very latest. Yeah, thank you for having me on. We've been separated for a year now. Um, he's been in prison for doing exactly what he was trained to do by Huntsville Police Department and Alabama uh, police standards. Uh, he answered a call on April 3rd, 2018 and did exactly what he was trained to do, was cleared by a department inve investigation. He had a trial three years after the fact, uh, which so many things were not allowed into evidence. His Sixth Amendment constitutional rights were violated to a public trial. Uh, testimony was not allowed to be heard. The jury was allowed to hear that he followed his training and that he was actually cleared by the department and the other two officers on scene were not. Um, so many things that we are fighting this appeal and very hopeful that he will come home. Uh, Supreme Court case law backs Ben, and that's what we are we are fighting. Yeah. Uh, indeed, 25 years. It's, a, it's such a long prison sentence, of course, um, and, and that just must be incredibly difficult to be separated from your husband right now. Uh, again, back to the very basics. Um, he had acted quickly in response to a suicidal man uh, who was reportedly holding a gun to his head. And your husband felt threatened in the moment. Is that right? You say he was acting in self-defense? Yes, ma'am. So law enforcement officers nationwide, I'm a, I'm a police officer as well, so I can speak to this professionally. We are trained to not go into a house when there is a gun involved with one person. We're trained to pull them out of the house, get them out of the house, and deal with them outside. And that's exactly what he had in his mind going to that call. The two original responding officers went against that training, went inside the house so that they didn't have any cover or concealment, anything to protect them from the individual with the gun that was to his head. Uh, when Ben got there, he saw that his officer, fellow officer was in danger, was not protecting herself, not using the techniques that we've been taught. And uh, Ben entered the residence and told the man to put the gun down. The man refused, said, I'm not going to do it. And Ben said, I'm not going to tell you again, put the gun down. And as he said that, uh, Parker had made a furtive movement towards Ben and Ben defended his life and the other two officers' lives that day. You know, when we talk about the dangers of the day-to-day -day that police officers face when they respond to calls, right? When you get a 911 call and you're sent to a home for domestic or, or other calls, you don't really know what's on the other side of that door. Tell me about what goes through a police officer's mind, since you yourself uh, have served in the force, you know, what you're thinking through when you arrive on scene. Yeah, so dispatch gives us the the brief details that they know, and we have to go based off of our training, you know, what could potentially happen, what we're looking at. Um, all he knew going into that call was Parker had called and said, I've got a gun. I'm fixing to blow my brains out. The front door's open. So you've got a potential ambush that you're looking at. You know that there's a gun involved. So the poten potential for deadly force is there. Um, and that's all that Ben went off of. And then his training.